Now here we have four different points, green, blue, purple and red. What are the coordinates of these points? So let's start off with the green one. Well, in coordinates, remember, we go along the corridor, up the stairs. So here, along the corridor, I go to zero. So my x coordinate of this one will be zero. Zero. And then comma, and then along the corridor, it's zero. And then up the stairs, it's up to 3. So my y coordinate will be 3. Now let's do the blue one. Along the corridor it is at minus 3. So my x coordinate will be minus 3 because the x coordinate, the first number, the first coordinate rep represents along the corridor. And then, so along the corridor it's minus 3 but I'm not moving. Am I going up the stairs or am I going down the stairs? Nope, I'm not moving up or down the stairs. I'm just staying at zero. Therefore, my y coordinate will be zero. And now the purple one, this one, okay, along the corridor I go to zero, along the corridor I go to zero, and then down the stairs I go to minus three. So along the corridor is zero, and then down the stairs to minus 3, therefore the y coordinate will be minus 3. And now the last one, the red one, along the corridor I go to 3, along the corridor I go to 3, so my x coordinate will be 3, comma. Now am I moving up or down the stairs? No I'm not, I'm not moving up or down the stairs, I'm staying at 0. Therefore, my y coordinate will be 0. Now, you, you should spot something here. Any, any point that is on the x-axis, that is on the x-line here, will have a y coordinate of 0. Y coordinate of 0. Because when you're on the x-axis, when you're on the when you're on the x line, you are not moving up or down the stairs. You're staying at zero. So the y coordinates will be zero. And any point on the y axis will have an x coordinate of zero because along the corridor you are at zero. Along the corridor you are at zero. So I repeat any point on the x axis will have a y coordinate of zero and any point on the y-axis will have an x-coordinate of 0. In this rectangle, work out the coordinates of the points C and D. Here we have been given a rectangle, but we have not been given uh, the scale on the axes. And we must use the coordinates given to infer these coordinates. Now. Immediately when you see these types of questions, what I want you to do is recognize that with the coordinates that have been given, let's start off with A, it's 3, 5. The 3 is along the corridor, it is at 3. Along the corridor, it is at 3. Therefore, this point here has to be 3. So I write 3 here. So along the corridor, it is at 3, and then up the stairs, it is at 5. The y value is 5, therefore up the stairs, it is at 5. The y value here is 5. So we write 5 here. And we do the same thing with the other coordinate, b. Along the corridor, it is at 6, because the x coordinate is 6. So along the corridor here, it must be 6. So we write 6 here. And then up the stairs, up the stairs is 2, because the y coordinate is 2. So up the stairs, it must be 2. So this must be 2 here. Now that we have written this down, we can use the information that this is a rectangle. If it's a rectangle, then this means that the sides, these sides, this side, the parallel sides are the same, they are equal. 
Now this means that, let's say if we start off with C, the x value must be 6 because it is exactly in line with this coordinate. So if the coordinate of B is 6, this one must be 6 as well because it is exactly in line. And the y value will be up the stairs. It is clearly at 5. So the y value is 5. And for D, along the corridor, it is at 3. Along the corridor, it's at 3. So the y value is 3. And up the stairs, it is at 2. Up the stairs, it's at 2. So the y value is 2. Now here, you should realize something that in a rectangle, in coordinates, these two points will have clearly have the same x values. These two points have the same x values. These two points have the same y values. And these two points have the same y values. So here we've been told that the isosceles triangle A has been reflected on the y-axis to form the triangle B. Work out the coordinates of the points C, D and E. Well, the first thing we need to do is realise or see that we have not been given the scale, but from the coordinates we can uh, work out some of the values here on the scale, on the x-axis. From this coordinate here, clearly this is along the corridor to 6 and up the stairs 2. Therefore, the value here will be 6, up the stairs to 2, so this is 2, and then the other coordinate here along the corridor is 5, up the stairs 5, therefore here it is 5, and then up the stairs it is at 5, and then the last coordinate here, well, because this is an isosceles triangle, we can infer that this must be along the corridor to 4, because if this coordinate is in the middle of these two, and it is at 5, and the gap here is 1, gap here must be 1 as well, so therefore this must be along the corridor to 4, up the stairs to 2, so here it is 4. Now, it says here that this is a reflection upon the y-axis. Now, if this is a reflection, it means that this is symmetrical, which means that the gap here, if the gap here is 4, along the corridor to 4, the gap here also must be 4 as well. But the only difference is now here we are in the negative x-axis. So here... It is at minus 4. And also, um, if this is at 5, then over here, this is at minus 5. And this one, if it's at 6, along the corridor to 6, here we are along the corridor to minus 6. Now, we have the values on the x-axis and we have the values on the y-axis, we can now just write down the coordinates. The coordinates of C will be along the corridor to minus 5, up the stairs to 5, so that's minus 5, minus 5, 5. The coordinates of D along the corridor to minus 6, up the stairs to 2, so that is minus 6, 2. And then the coordinates of E along the corridor to minus 4, up the stairs to 2. So that's minus 4, 2. And that's it. We're done.